The current big exhibition at the British Museum in London is entitled Sunken Cities, Egypt's Lost Worlds, and it's testament to a relatively new area of endeavour, underwater archaeology. Statuary from not one, but two ancient Egyptian cities, submerged in the mouth of the Nile after an earthquake and tsunami some 1,200 years ago. And that's where our story takes us next, under the sea. Another scientific team in Germany is developing new ways of exploring the deep. In the landlocked town of Ilmenau in Germany, a joint venture between the Fraunhofer Institute and Aranex Maritime Technologies, to begin with, they weren't necessarily thinking of archaeology. Yes, a largely yellow submarine. Not one as in the Beatles song we all might live in, but one with hugely exciting potential. This is a deep diving autonomous underwater vehicle, or D-Day for short. Now, no shipwreck, no submerged ancient civilization is out of reach. Humans are better informed what's happened on the moon, and 95% uh, of all our oceans are not explored by us. We humans have obvious limits. The world record is about 350 meters. The shallow depths are somewhat crowded. 500 meters is the realm of the giant octopus and submarines. Below that, we find communication cables, unexploded ordnance from our many conflicts. At 3,000 meters, Cuvier's beak whales above the Titanic's final resting place. In the inky darkness, the fish are bioluminescent. It's within this realm, once left to folklore and the strangest of sea creatures, that D-Day will operate, for now. One of the, the most important components is the titanium frame. It is like the human skeleton. It gives strength for the system and it allows to withstand the great pressures in the deep sea. You have a very huge payload section and then you can easily integrate new payloads or new navigational sensors. We integrate very, very small uh, battery packs and you can simply insert it, remove the lever and then you're good to go. The prototype is deliberately blind using sonar rather than light. Lights and cameras are very energy consuming and the most efficient way like in nature is to use sonar systems. The software creates based on the echoes an image of the sea floor or even a 3D map and we can detect very small objects. Still in a testing phase they believe that a commercial model can be built for under four million dollars. The obvious clients for this are the oil and gas industries but one day it may well be archaeologists. <laughs>